Okay, good afternoon everyone and thank you for taking time out of your busy schedules today for uh, this webinar by YPO and WAVE on the new water framework 1008. Uh, this is part of YPO's week of webinars. We're putting a webinar on every day um, about uh, various topics really but sort of centering around contracting through YPO uh, and, and sort of driving those initiatives through your organisations that can help sort of reduce carbon, help efficiency, save money. So my name's Rob Clark. I'm one of the energy category managers at YPO. So I'll just run through a little bit of housekeeping if I can with you. Um, we've got the microphones muted today just to make it a little bit easier really in terms of um, getting the presentation uh, delivered as smoothly as possible. Um, if you would like to uh, ask any questions throughout the presentation, You'll see there's a Q&A button uh, on the toolbar that you should see as part of this uh, presentation. Just click that and type any questions that you may have in there and we'll pick all those up at the end. So without any further ado, um, I'll just do a little bit of an introduction, then I'll hand you over to colleagues uh, from WAVE. So the English water retail market uh, opened a little over three years ago um, and was uh, driven by DEFRA and Offwatt essentially uh, to bring competition to the retail element um, of water services. There are 25 water wholesalers in the market and those are regionally based um, but now well, since the market opened uh, customers uh, of eligible organisations, of which the public sector is definitely eligible, um, can choose who their retailer is. So there are some efficiencies that can be delivered through this and also some service standards that can be delivered too. So we've created this new framework really specifically to hone in on the requirements of the public sector. And we've done this as a joint procurement with colleagues from ESPO, Tech and West Mercia Energy. And as I say, it, it focuses on the needs of the public sector. So um, public sector has a range of portfolios to be managed. So, and some of these are, are quite major, hundreds and hundreds of supply points. So actually having um, a single water partner to help deliver uh, management of water in all its forms across those, those portfolio, portfolios is critical. What we also wanted to do was address some of the issues around how customers engage with the market. Now, um, there are lots of other routes to actually access the water market out there, but uh, what we wanted to do was address some of the issues around those, around how long it takes to access the market and actually put in a streamlined switching system. Um, so it, it becomes very, very fast to engage in this process. Obviously, the public sector is under constraints around budget, so it needs to be a very cost effective process. But our, our public sector customers were telling us that the key thing for them was around quality of service. Um, as I say, the water market has now been open for three years um, and it's going through uh, an evolution, if you like, in terms of how those um, services get delivered and the standards of service around those. So um, it's starting to mature a little bit now. So we, we felt it was the right time to go out there and actually state some hard and fast rules really around how we wanted public sector customers servicing. Um, the other point I guess to raise here at this point is this our, our issues around procurement compliance. So obviously uh, public sector procurement regulations uh, state that um, public sector spend over certain thresholds has to be compliant. And that's what we've done with this. So this is a fully OJU compliant tender process that we went through. Um, and obviously what you get as an additional benefit through this is the YPO and the other public sector uh, purchasing organizations standing behind this framework and working with this framework are actually going to be managing WAVE as a supplier through this as well. So you actually get an extra layer of uh, support um, and an extra layer of um, sort of information management, if you like, coming through this as well. 
So the benefits as we see it for, uh, through the framework are that customers will get very simple and clear pricing delivered through this method. Um, and, and not only that, uh, the way that we've structured it is that there are some uh, even more advantageous benefits for the largest supplies. Um, you will receive key account management. Now, key account management will be, um, you will get dedicated account managers allocated to you. So um, there'll be no sort of call center type scenario where you know you might get a different person every time you ring you'll have a named contact that you will be able to talk to about anything around your water supply or your water needs um, as i mentioned earlier there's enhanced reporting through this function as well so we're trying to build into the procurement deliverables you know, all the tools that you're going to need um, for your organization in actually managing that water um, information and try to manage that water volume that you consume down um, with extensive online reporting tools available um, and lots of choice around how you receive your billing so the things that you may already receive um, as added value around your electricity and gas contracts for instance such as billing groups setting up your own custom billing groups um, receiving electronic billing, going paperless, um, having different rules set against different billing groups will all be supported through this framework. What we've also done through the procurement activity is sort of challenged retailers in the market to give a commitment to reduce wastage and drive down the cost of water services for our customers. We've done quite a bit of work in the past uh, looking at how much water gets wasted and for most organizations we believe that the savings uh, from active water management can be in the order of 20 percent upwards so you know that really puts into perspective the value of having um, a good quality supplier on the framework who can actually work with you identify those savings opportunities and deliver on them and these sort of feed into the key ancillary services which will be delivered through this framework um, such as lead detection and repair water management and emergency planning so there's a range of emergency of uh, sorry ancillary services delivered through this framework that you can take advantage of so overall what we've tried to do with this is make this more about the added value that you would get beyond it just being a supply contract you know we've appointed an experienced water partner and we really want to stress that partnership angle on this that's how customers will get the most out of this arrangement um and and, and really this is about hitting all those things which are important to you reducing waste and saving money so without any further ado i'll hand you over to bill and michael from wave who will take you through the next part of this webinar thanks Thanks for the introduction, Rob. Good afternoon, everybody. My name is Bill Humphrey, and I'm delighted to be presenting today on behalf of Wave as your new water partner. I'm joined today by my colleague, Michael Carey, who I'll introduce in a moment. We are now three and a half years into the deregulated water market, and I've been involved in a number of large contract awards both in the public and commercial sectors. And I have to say, I'm very excited about the opportunities presented by this framework. Working closely with the four PBOs that have developed this framework, we want to provide a simple, compliant route to market, form close and productive relationships with new and existing customers, and ensure you get best value in terms of quality of service, access to innovative products and services, and a genuine commitment to support you in achieving your efficiency targets. So a little bit about myself. I've just entered my 35th year in the water industry starting in Northwest Water Authority in 1986 in the meter department in Bootle, Merseyside. I worked my way through the billing, 
debt and complaints departments before going out on the road as part of a team identifying unbilled properties. Northwest Water became United Utilities and I completed 30 years service there in 2016, the last 10 years as a key account manager. Six months prior to the water market opening, I was offered the chance to move to the incumbent water retailer for the United Utilities region or to take a package. It was a really tough decision, but I decided to leave and um, went on my sabbatical. Six months later, quite frustrated and looking for something to do, I was contacted by an ex-colleague who had heard Northumbrian Water were recruiting. I'd really missed the water industry and I was intrigued as to how the competitive market would work. So I applied for the role as account manager and was fortunate, fortunate enough to be appointed. So 12 months later, Northumbrian Water Group Business formed a joint venture with Anglian Water Business, creating WAVE. And another opportunity arose to head up the English public sector team. And so here I am. Over the past two years, we've made some major acquisitions in the English public sector, and I will talk about our experience and some of our successes later in this presentation. On a personal level, I still live in Merseyside. I'm married with two grown up children who've now left home, so we've replaced them with three whippets, Harvey, Kofi and Colin. I like to travel, play and watch sport, including football and tennis, and enjoy going to pop concerts for live theatre. Pretty much all the things we can't presently do due to COVID. But I'm sure at some point in the near future, they'll start to come back. So that's me. I would now like to hand you over to Michael. Thanks, Bill. Hello, everyone. My name is Michael Carey. I'm the Public Sector Business Development Manager here at WAVE. I joined WAVE almost two years ago following um, seven years at a utility cost recovery consultant uh, in my local area, which is Lytham St. Anne's in Lancashire. My role at WAVE is to lead on customer transition, so from assisting new and existing customers at the development stage, aiding in the process of SPID data collation through to contract signature and onboarding of customers. This compromises working closely with Bill and the, the, the whole of the public sector team here at WAVE to ensure an effective handover to account managers, ensuring that all customer requirements are captured and understood to provide the best onboarding experience possible for customers. On a personal level, I too am married. I've got one child, Grace. Um, Grace turned one just a few months ago and has started to walk. So she's really keeping us on our toes now. Um, and we've recently moved house, which slight challenge um, but we've, we've, we've sort of got our hands full now over the next few years to, to really make it our own. So as you can see behind me it needs some modernising and the choice of wallpaper certainly wasn't mine but uh, we'll get there. So we wanted to as, as sort of the next slide share a bit more about WAVE with you. You may come across WAVE, you may not know fully um, what WAVE sort of uh, the background or what WAVE have to offer so we wanted to cover just a few points with you um, so you can see there we hold an 18% market share servicing uh, over 300,000 customers now. Um, we've offices in Peterborough and Durham which house our internal teams and we've got employees based nationally for instance as we've just covered Bill and I are, are based over in the northwest here. Um, although like many businesses at the moment all WAVE employees are currently working from home um, since March this year due to the, the COVID-19 um, regulations there. With regards to corporate social value, ever since the water industry moved into a competitive market, CSR has been more relevant than ever. And as you'd expect, CSR forms a, a large part of this new water framework as well. So WAVE have a lot of experience working towards CSR for our business as a whole, but also working towards CSR within public sector contracts and frameworks. We've got a slide to share some examples with you uh, as we move forward as well. We've successfully facilitated the COVID-19 wholesaler scheme for our customers. So Offwatt Mo off Mosul and retailers realised that the lockdown in March would have a large impact on customers across all sectors. 
and so wholesalers in connection with Offwat and Mosul introduced flags in the market which meant retailers could temporarily close customer sites. All in all, we've updated over 16,000 records in our portfolio to help customers save money on closed premises. So it's been a great project that we, 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 we got stuck into as soon as we possibly could, which has also seen great customer value as well. The seven national awards for employee engagement and well-being in the workplace this includes things like mental health awareness, financial planning, and then access um, to a large library of online training resources and courses for employees. In looking after our own employees, we're providing a platform for our employees to then look after our customers. And that works really well, I think, especially at the moment in times of um, everybody working from home, like, we, like we've said, the well-being really does um, take a, a good part for, for our internal colleagues. So WAVE are proud to have a dedicated public sector team. We understand the unique public sector requirements and how they differ from the private sector, not only by routes to market and, and to the procurement regulations or rules, but also servicing the contract as time moves forward as well. As such, by building an experienced team to service the public sector customers, um, we, we genuinely believe that customers can enjoy that long-standing partnership with the supplier that understands their needs and in turn effectively manages their portfolio. I'm going to hand over back to Bill for you to meet our public sector team. Thanks, Michael. Let me introduce you to WAVE's English public sector team. So firstly, Tony March, our Director of Public Sector and Industrial Customers. Tony headed up our public sector contract in Scotland for four years and he still has established links with the Scottish Central Market Agency. Tony has also forged close links with major PBOs within the English market, including CCS, YPO, NEPO and LASER. Tony will lead WAVE's strategic engagement on this framework. My role is to manage the team of account managers servicing our contracts and to ensure that our framework contractual obligations are met and that all framework reporting is delivered on time. Michael's role, as he's just mentioned, is to support our bid team with tender submissions for new public sector frameworks Michael also works on prospecting for new public sector business, including the promotion of frameworks we have been awarded. He also guides customers through the onboarding process, and we will cover that later on in this presentation. Henry Tam is currently covering a 12 month maternity leave in the role of framework project manager. Henry liaises closely with our reporting team and ensures the production and delivery of monthly KPI reports, both for the PBOs and for customers. Henry is also involved with the implementation plans for any new framework and the upkeep of our risk and issue logs. Claire Robinson is the first of our five dedicated public sector account managers. Claire is based in the Northeast and manages our NEPO customers. Claire has held this role since before market opening in 2017 and has established some very close links with a portfolio of contacts. Jeff Harpin, like myself, originally worked at United Utilities and found his way to WAVE. Jeff also has over 30 years experience in the water industry having originally joined on the Graduate Recruitment Scheme. Jeff is based in Manchester and his portfolio covers the North East and North West of England. Jeff is currently managing the relationship with Lancashire County Council, who he had previously managed at United Utilities. Bev Cripps has also been with the company prior to market opening. Bev's portfolio is split between the Essex and Suffolk area and our contract in Greater London. 
This patch presents numerous challenges as it covers multiple wholesaler areas and cross-border supplies. Jen Arms originally joined the team as our framework project manager back in 2018. Jen's main previous experience was in customer service and after eight months she moved into the role of account manager. Jen now covers our contract in Greater London along with some large public sector customers in the Anglian water area. And last but not least, Helen Harris. Helen joined our team in 2019, having previously worked on our wholesale liaison team. Helen covers the majority of public sector customers in the Anglian water area. And one area she specializes in is reviewing maximum daily demands for customers. So that's us. We have a stable and vastly experienced team who fully appreciate the needs and requirements of our public sector customers. We are all looking forward to forging new relationships and delivering tailored propositions over the coming weeks and months. Michael, back to you. Thanks, Bill. So the next slide sort of, although we've said there that we, uh, the English public sector team is very, we understand public sector requirements are, are specialist and that's why we sort of form the team around it. We also then understand that the, the public sector sort of um, uh, types are very much different as well. So we manage a, a wide range of public sector customers and linking into the previous slide and, and what we've said already, we understand the unique requirements of each. So some examples of which could include supporting with um, swimming pool tariffs for leisure centres, trade effluent content for emergency services with vehicle washing stations, for instance, effective move in and move outs for housing associations, the importance of Legionella control and continuity for NHS trusts and the need to support educational resources such as universities as well. We tailor our service offering to ensure each requirement is obeyed. So this could be a local authority on a consolidated bill set up, bringing um, a portion of schools on board that also then require direct to site billing, for instance, within the same portfolio. So Bill will now talk us through um, a few case studies of how we've tailored our service to the individual types of public sector customers. Thanks, Michael. On the next two slides, I just wanted to share with you our experience on two large public sector contracts. Firstly, Lancashire County Council, who tell us they are the second largest local authority in England. We acquired this contract on a two plus two basis on the 1st of April, 2018. The portfolio totaled approximately 2,000 SPIDs, including corporate sites and schools. We worked closely with the council prior to onboarding to ensure historic debt was cleared with their previous water retailer, and we achieved a 99% transfer rate. There was just a few SPIDs that were bounced out due to corrupt data that was held in the central market database. The council had several billing preferences. We set up a combination of group bills for corporate sites and some schools and set up direct to site bills for sites that managed their own budgets. So when we first started reading the meters on this contract, it was out of our area, so it was all new to us. The meter location details recorded in CMOS in many cases were inadequate and we just about achieved a 70% read rate in the first couple of months. However, it only took us a few more months after working closely with the customer and the wholesaler to overcome these issues and we are now achieving a 90% read rate on a monthly basis on approximately 900 metres. We operate a high consumption alert service 
and this has resulted in the customer avoiding costs of approximately £200,000 since 2018. This is as a result of responding quickly to the high consumption alerts and resolving the issues that were found. Earlier this year, we were delighted that Lancashire County Council extended their contract with us up until 2022. On to the next slide. The London Energy Project was at the time the largest single public sector water contract in the English market. It was awarded in May 2018 through a YPO further competition. To date, we have signed up 36 authorities, including Transport for London, London Fire, Metropolitan Police, along with several NHS trusts and 17 London Borough Councils. We host an annual conference, this year's being an online event due to current circumstances, along with regular webinars. Our main objective on this contract has been to deliver customer satisfaction through accurate and timely billing, cost and efficiency savings through proactive account management and to deliver a corporate social value programme across Greater London. The majority of customers who signed up to this framework built in a review clause after 12 months and I'm very pleased to say that to date we have a 100% sign up rate on all of the renewals. So I hope these two case studies have given you some confidence in the experience that we've managed to achieve across the public sector in dealing with a wide variety of different types of customers. So back to you, Michael, to talk about the benefits of this framework. Thanks, Bill. So there are many benefits of being on this framework, as you'd expect, I guess, from a PSBO collaboration too. The framework has been developed with simplicity in mind, specifically sorry, around the call-off process, and we'll cover a slide on the engagement and onboarding process a bit later on. Things like CS, uh, CSR and innovation are baked into the framework to drive ourselves as a supplier to work in partnership with our customers and with the PSBOs as well, to deliver high standards to the benefit of our customers and their communities. This links into the KPIs, objectives and aspirations, which are very clear, relevant and again designed to drive for all parties to gain the most out of the framework agreement. Regular PSBO support, regular customer meetings and regular reporting ensures full transparency in the delivery of our partnership. A key benefit and where savings can be realised is through water efficiency measures and Bill is going to talk us through at uh, these ancillary services sections now. It uh, looks like Bill's on mute still there. My apologies, Rob. Sorry about that. I was good. I, I, why it's jumping this? Oh dear. Can you take that back, Rob, to the previous slide? There we go. Thank you. Sorry, guys. Uh, here we go. Ancillary services. Um, my message here is to reinforce the importance of ancillary services and the fact that you have direct access to them as part of this framework. The ancillary services will support you with consumption management, enabling you to set reduction targets or to react quickly to any issues as they arise. They'll support you with building resilience 
allowing you to understand how critical water is to your sites and operations and to develop appropriate contingency plans. It'll allow you to ensure compliance, helping you understand your responsibilities with regards to water and associated risks such as Legionella control. And ancillary services will help you embrace innovation, sharing best practice and scanning the horizon for new ideas and technology that can tackle your challenges. So we are very confident that if you fully engage with us and make the most of this framework, then we can make some significant achievements together. I just wanted to pull an example for the, su uh, the, the success that we achieved up in Scotland in our four years there. Over the four years of that contract, we achieved 5.5 million pounds in cost savings. And we actually saved 2.1 million cubic meters of water. That's enough water to keep Niagara Falls flowing for 15 minutes. Michael, I'll hand back to you now to cover off the contracting process. Thanks, Will. So the process of engagement is designed, um, as mentioned, to, 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 is designed to make calling off of the framework easy and straightforward. To complement this, we've developed a seven stage contracting process, which compromises of stage one, we've got expression of interest. So we take the opportunity at stage one there to, to speak with you, to understand your requirements, understand your aspirations from the, from the contract, and, and how, what you would like us to deliver for you. Stage two is the framework customer access agreement um, to be signed. So this doesn't commit to, to using the contract, but it does allow us to speak more openly and provide any pricing detail and quotation um, com comparisons as well. Stage three, um, we assist you in the co uh, co collation of SPID data. And this is where we will introduce a data sheet, which ensures we capture uh, tailored options that you choose, tailoring the contract towards you. We are able to use this data to form a quotation and this pricing is then presented back to you in a broken down format. So you can see the, how the price compares to on, on site level. Stage four, if you're happy to proceed, is the call off contract um, and the signature. Stage five, we'll issue a welcome pack and we take that opportunity again to, to meet with you or have a call with you and reconfirm, uh, reconfirm all of your requirements that we've, we've captured throughout the journey to ensure we've got everything down and, and, and we're understanding the, the full portfolio uh, before in preparation for onboarding. Stage six is the onboarding process. So WAVE will lead on switching and the onboarding process and then account manager handover also takes place at this stage. The handover is conducted in a meeting or on a call between the business development manager, the account manager and the customer. And this is to ensure that the dialogue can continue between yourself and WAVE um, being towards the account manager uh, rather than sort of recapturing your own requirements and starting again with, with somebody new. So as Rob said at the beginning there, it's, it's a continuity of, of the communication. Stage seven, um, finally, uh, your first bill will be issued and you move forwards with your account manager. So I hope that's a good overview of the introduction to WAVE, um, the framework and the journey to utilising it. I'll hand back over to Rob now to talk around the engagement and also to conclude the session today. Thank you for joining and listening in. Okay, uh, thank you, Bill. Thank you, Michael. Um, all that remains to be said, I guess, is that this framework is available now. It went live at the beginning of this week and it's available for any public sector or not-for-profit organization to use. Um, you know, there is no membership requirement uh, to access this framework, anything like that. As long as you're an eligible organization uh, that can access this framework through YPO, that's perfectly fine. Just come and have a conversation with us. And you can start that process by simply emailing energy at ypo.co.uk and we'll get back to you with more information on those steps that Michael um, determined there for us. 
Or alternatively, if you already have a relationship with one of the other PSBO partners in the project, then have a conversation with them about joining through them as well. Um, you know, it, 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 there's multiple ways to access this. All of the partners are, are, are ready now. We can actually hold your hand, help you through that process and help deliver the ben maximum benefit through this framework. So all that remains really is if anyone has any questions and I can see that we've received some already. Uh, I've got a question from Katie saying billing groups um can we add together different water meters on one bill so i guess this is a, a question about consolidation um does do you, michael do you want to take that one yeah definitely so so in short the answer is yes um you can sort of mix and match billing options as well so um, a local authority for instance may have one consolidated bill with however many meters on on that one bill um, and there'll be a sort of a CSV file there as well to, to break that down. If there's different sites that require um, also different billing options, so if there's some that should be consolidated and some that should be single site billing, then obviously we can, we can work with that as well. Okay, thanks Michael. Hopefully that answers your question, Katie. Um, a question from Lorraine, is the framework available for use nationwide? Um, so I'll take that one. Uh, yeah, absolutely. Um, the framework is available to any um, eligible organization. Retail water market. Uh, so that is all, that is nationwide across England and there's little bits of it that kind of spill into Wales slightly but uh, the whole of Wales is not covered under this, this uh, current arrangement with the, as part of the English water retail market. Um, we've got another question from Lorraine. Will water meters ever be compulsory? Wow. Uh, <laughs> there's a question probably for Bill or Michael to answer. Well, I'll take that one, please, Rob. So um, water meters should be compulsory for all non-household customers. So at this moment, there should be one. The only reason why a meter wouldn't exist is if it's a complex shared supply arrangement where there's more than one uh, building being supplied by the same service and it, no one's accepting responsibility for the whole of that particular property. But uh, as far as the terms and conditions exist at the moment, all non-household um, properties should have a water meter. What we should maybe add to that is that the framework actually has provision within it for unmetered supplies. So if anybody, if anybody does have unmetered supplies, and I know there are a lot out there, um, you know, from things like little stand pipes or things like that, which are part of say a council's portfolio or allotment sites, those kind of things that aren't metered, they're certainly capable to be served through this framework too. Um, I've got a, a, a question from Claire who says, uh, we already use WAVE as our water supplier, so I would need some specific details on the, what this would mean for our accounts, prices and existing queries. I'm happy to answer that one, Rob. So um, thank you, Claire. Um, so we, we would sort of look as a, as a renewal stance as opposed to a, um, a sort of brand new full onboarding. So um, the, the actual process is quite straightforward. And once the, the sort of contracts are signed and, and, and the call of contracts from this, uh, this framework, we would just update the details in, in our billing system and perform that renewal. So I'm happy to, um, to follow up with you if you like and, um, and, and look at the, the accounts in particular and the, the level of detail that's required for, for each account. Just to add to that, Michael, I think what you will also find, Claire, is that by joining this framework, you'll find uh, an elevated level of partnership, uh, commitment, uh, increased uh, focus on reporting and driving out further efficiencies, because that's what uh, the PBOs are really trying to achieve out of this exercise, a better service and uh, experience all around for you all. So we're bought into that. We want to deliver on that. And so, yeah, um, by all means, contact Michael, and we very much look forward to, to working closer with you. Thank you, chaps. Um, a question from Cindy, um, is there only one supplier on this framework or multiple partners? Now this, this is a single supplier framework, Cindy. Um, we've done that for a number of reasons. 
Um, one is that one of the issues around onboarding and the thing that takes a lot of time in some of the other procurement activities is the fact that um, it's quite a complex tender to run. Um, so what we wanted to do was really appoint and, and sort of stress that this is a, a water partner by someone who's actually able to deliver this for all customers in a consistent way. So that this was some of the feedback that was coming back from um, our customers, uh, essentially that that's what they wanted. They wanted it to work much like the, the, the way that the PSBO gas and electricity frameworks work. So a uh, single supplier can have that relationship with um, and we can collaborate, collaborate better as customers on that. Um, so Waver, the only supplier on the framework, we ran a fully compliant um, tender process um, with the market, uh, lots of engagement um, and Wave came out of that scoring the highest, meeting all of the criteria that we determined was important for public sector customers. I hope that answers your question there, Cindy. Um, Lorraine's asking why not household ones? That's, an, that's a good question actually, uh, Lorraine. Um, the, um, what off what have done by creating this market uh, is, is essentially, uh, this is just business only. Uh, there is only a market for business at the moment. So um, private household supplies, there is no market for. There were always, has been some intention to roll it out wider and roll and create a, a, a household retail market um but that's that's not happened as yet i don't know whether bill or michael want to add anything more um there were just a couple of things um maybe the question was aimed at the market and maybe the question was also aimed at why are households not forcibly having a meter fitted as well so i was looking at both of those questions so in terms of the market yes rob i think there is a genuine appetite to eventually go down that line but i think that there were a white paper that was being prepared um, and we would have seen whether or not government would have debated whether we would have seen competition come into the domestic market but then brexit got in the way and so Brexit became the big talking point for Parliament. And, and so that was put on the back burner. But I, I would imagine that uh, domestic competition will be on the horizon in the near future at some point. But then back to the point about the metres. Um, since 1990, every brand new property that is built has to have a water meter installed. So there will become a point where more houses have water meters than the old properties that don't and then there'll, there'll come a point at which it becomes economically viable for a water wholesaler to say right well let's go and complete the uh, installation of meters across the full um, portfolio of domestics but as it currently stands at the moment that's not viable and uh, that's why we have a mixture of um, domestics being charged on rateable value and uh, metered water consumption Okay, um, a question from Alan. Um, is the fitting of AMRs and the sharing of data on all meters, be part, is that part of the contract? Um, AMR is certainly something that is deliverable through this uh, framework, as, and, 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 as, as Alan probably knows and, and, and maybe other people on this call do as well. Um, the collection of AMR data actually gives you that granularity on how your sites are consuming uh, that water throughout the day. And it also gives uh, lots of early action uh, warning, if you like, if there is a leak. So if the um, consumption on the site suddenly starts increasing without any due reason on site for that, then it actually gives you that insight into that happening, that visibility that you wouldn't normally have until the next meter read. So uh, yes, AMRs are available through this supply contract and that AMR data will, is available to customers as well. So, um, a question from either, um, how long does it take for the contracting period to be successfully completed? Uh, another good question. Again, we, we said right at the very, very start, this is about fast onboarding. So, basically, um, we can get the document, the access agreement document across to you. If you sign that, that effectively then allows us to share information freely backwards and forwards with you. Um, it's a simple form to complete that you just include your SPIDs, your supply point IDs, 
which are effectively the meat and details for any supplies that you want to bring on uh, to, to the contract. Then that, that get, then goes across to Wave, um, who can price against that for you. You get the pricing back. If you say yes, you just sign the contract at that point and the switch is, goes live within 30 days. The 30 days is in line with market codes. So we've tried to make this as streamlined as, pro as possible. Um, from experience of work that we've done before and further competitions that we've run, like uh, as, as, uh, as was discussed earlier in the presentation, the one that we did for the London Energy Project, that could take up to six months in the past. So what we've tried to do is make this a much more streamlined, better experience for customers in terms of actually getting into that contracting process and getting those supplies supplied with the new provider through this framework and delivering the benefits of the framework as quickly as possible to you. Hope that answers your question there. Just got a couple more questions to get through. Uh, does the contract include leak detection services at set price? Well, as, as we've just mentioned there, AMR is a great thing to look at in there. So yeah, there's AMR costs through ancillary services are in the, in the framework. So you can have AMR. There are a number of other technologies available as well, which are uh, presented through the framework, but you also get uh, active water management as part of this. And I'll let uh, Bill or Michael explain a little bit more about what that is. Yes, um, so our active water management uh, offering is where we are constantly reviewing the consumptions recorded from the meter readings we obtain, whether that be via face-to-face, -face, uh, sorry, uh, cyclic reads that are done by our meter readers, whether it's acquired by AMR. There are some wholesalers that provide us with data as well that they're obtaining automatically from their meters. There's a whole range of uh, data. It's managing that data and keeping a proactive look on it to notify you of any um, untoward, out of sync sort of consumptions so that we can react very quickly to keeping your costs down. So that, that active water management is making sure that we sit down with you we evaluate your consumption profile. We look at ways of, of improving on that consumption profile and we identify any standout examples and we, we have a look at those for you as well. That will all come as part of your discussions with your account managers if you to come onto the framework. How hope answers your question, Alan. Uh, another question from uh, Ivor. Uh, could we have one account manager for multiple sites? Yes. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. So, um, the way um, the account management team work at the moment is one customer. So, if if you would be the main contact there, either then our account manager would would sort of contact make contact with yourself, and that's where the the sort of account management level would be. So, any sites that then you look after that are in your remit there, or or even as part of your call off contract, would would sort of fall under the same account manager. So it just eases that, that sort of communication and consistency really with dealing with just one person um, uh, continuously. And, and that's one of the key sort of takeaways of the way that we've made this framework. We've, we've built in lots of things that we're holding Wave to task to deliver essentially and YPO will be managing that at, at, a, at a contract level in the background always. Um, and but equally, we've built in a lot of flexibility for the customer. So um, the customer can effectively slice and dice this however they want around those services to best suit you uh, and deliver the, out the outcomes that you want. So if you want account management, uh, a single account manager across a number of sites um, so that you can have consistency of how that gets delivered, that's perfectly fine. Okay. Um, Question from Katie, this is quite an interesting one. We have separate supply and wastewater providers, presumably, I'm, I'm taking that Katie. Will you take on both under one, this one contract? Yes, that is um, one of the benefits, Katie. You really want to just be dealing with one water retailer so that your billing is all neat and tidy. And that will be one of the benefits of joining this contract. As I mentioned earlier, 
Bev, who works in the Essex and Suffolk area. There are many customers that are with their sewerage for one wholesaler and with an, another wholesaler for the water. And it just makes sense to have one retailer bringing those bills together and presenting you with one overall charge. So yes, the answer is yes. Thanks, Bill. Just a couple more questions that we have at the moment. Um, oh, actually, I've only got one more question at the moment. Um, can billing be provided on EDI for centralised billing? And if you're with another provider um, through a different framework at the moment, will this cause a problem? I can take that one. Yes, we have developed an EDI file. So you can have your electronic bills in um, CSV or EDI file, or you can have both. Um, it's, it's an option that you select when you're having your conversation with Michael and you're putting your billing uh, proposals together. So yes, we are able to do it. We did work closely with the likes of Team and Systems Link in the development of the EDI file because they are the sort of agencies that upload these, um, these files into their systems so that they can do the automatic analysis and uh, onward uh, processing of the bills. So um, yes, we, we can certainly, we, we do offer that uh, currently to our customers. Right, excellent. Thanks, Bill. Um, uh, one more question here. Um, do WAVE take care of notifying the incumbent suppliers as part of the contracting process? Yeah, I'm happy to answer that one. So um, WAVE will, will lead on the, the, the onboarding or the transfer process on your behalf. So as soon as we've, we've gotten this sort of comprehensive SPID list and we've gone through to our internal onboarding team, um, as Rob says there, that, that process takes 20 business days. Um, and as part of that is is notifying incumbent suppliers, um, retailers, and, and sort of transferring those bids over to us. There is, um, it's worth noting on that point, two reasons why um, SPIDs can be rejected from transfer. The first one is any debt on, on that SPID over 90 days. Um, and the second one is if, if there's a live contract um, that that SPIDs in as well. So usually the live contract one is okay. It can be worth um, or it, it certainly is worth um, just checking any sort of debt positions that, um, that are on each account or each bid with an incumbent retailer um, as well. But they're the kind of conversations that fall into um, that onboarding process, um, that we, the, the seven stages as well. Um, so we will give you some heads up and, and tips on what to look out for and, and where to look for them. Um, I've just had a follow-up question as well on the leak detection question um, uh, that says we have uh, sub-main distribution networks. If a leak is identified on that network, do you offer services to identify the point of pipe failure? Um, yes, that, that was actually, Alan, one of the uh, things that we asked specifically around delivery in the framework. So the leak detection and repair service is part of this. As I've said a couple of times, this is about appointing a water partner. So any anything that you need in terms of um, management of your sites and the water supply around those sites or reducing water supply at those sites, taking on new supply at those sites can all be delivered through this framework. Um, Eva's asked one more question. Are there any options for billing? For example, monthly, quarterly, six monthly, depending on our preference. Um, what we've set at the outset is that billing will be set monthly unless the customer asks for an alternative. So um, one of the things that again came out of our consultation with public sector customers prior to creating this framework was the um, Oh, how can I be diplomatic? Uh, <laughs> the, <laughs> was, was how infrequent some suppliers sent bills. And uh, actually, just one of the key things that came out from some of the, the customers that we've been talking to around this was we just want regular, accurate bills. So that was certainly part of the ITT. Uh, I don't know whether Michael or Bill would like to add any more to that. Yeah, I think for me, I can just echo your, your feedback there, Robin. That's the feedback we, we get a lot as well. And, and by far, monthly billing is, um, is, is probably the most popular. And I think it's, 
it tends to be what what options are are preferred and selected just to just due to that regularity around around getting the bill and and um, and things there. So um, obviously, there's this conversations we can have anyway, and it all forms as part of the the data sheet when we um, when we come to onboard the SPIDs as well to, to to take those requirements from you as well and 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 see where we are. Obviously, there's. It works differently as well for measured and unmeasured SPIDs too, um, in terms of the, the, the billing period there. So you might find if it's unmeasured, that's okay. But if it's um, if it's measured, you do want a monthly bill and, and we can definitely work with that as well. Just to add to that, um, Michael, the, the, the thing that really drives the monthly billing is that we are billed as a retailer by the wholesaler on a monthly basis. So it's, it's imperative to try and, you know, bill you in accordance with what we're being billed so that we can match up and make sure that we honour the payments back into the wholesalers in a timely fashion. So that's the real driver behind the monthly, but it's, it's, it's not something that uh, excludes any other billing option. It just means that, you know, the further you go into different uh, frequencies, then that will be looked into in terms of the overall pricing mechanism for that uh, uh, contract you're signing. Yeah, it should it should be stated that the uh, in the contract we made it clear that there was that there actually is no difference in terms of pricing that you receive, whether you know if you choose a different billing frequency. Right. Okay. There is no you know no no one will be penalised if they choose a different billing frequency, but we do understand that the market is predicated towards settlement. Uh, you know, quick settlement and uh, and so monthly. You know, uh, many organisations now are quite familiar with electricity and gas bills coming monthly rather than quarterly. So um, uh, certainly with the drive towards half hourly su uh, supplies and settlement. And that's something that the water market is trying to uh, replicate as well. So obviously the framework with it being a modern framework and a forward thinking framework obviously needs to support those things too. Right, we, we have no more questions at this point. So uh, thank you all very much for your time today. Hopefully you found that useful. Uh, an introduction to the new supplier on the, uh, on the new framework um, and uh, a flavor of the kind of benefits that can be achieved through working with YPO and the PSBO partners and WAVE on your future water contracting. Uh, thanks once again um, and uh, take care. Thank you very much. Thanks everyone. Cheers. Thank you.